I talk to my students actually don't don't think about bass, think about yourself. I mean, your mm. your performance, bass is your instrument just on which you can perform. So if you feel that something wrong with instrument, maybe it's something wrong with you, and mm. just to try to figure out how it really works for you. Welcome to another episode of Contrabass Conversations, your show covering life on the low end of the spectrum. I'm your host, Jason Heath. So glad to have you here today. And check out our archives going back over 10 years, hundreds of episodes, dozens of countries at ContrabassConversations.com. And I'd love to hear from you. Send me a message, feedback at ContrabassConversations.com. Let me know a little bit about yourself, where you're from, a guest idea for the show. That would be great. I'm so excited to bring you Artem Cherkov who's the principal bassist of the St. Petersburg Philharmonic and the winner of the 2010 Bradditch International Double Bass Competition. Artem was in San Francisco a few weeks ago, and I got the chance to hear him play a wonderful recital, including Passiona Amorosa with Joe Lesher of the San Francisco Opera, many other great selections. And the next morning, I headed over to Shinji Ashima's place, San Francisco opera bassist and wonderful composer Shinji. He was on the podcast back in 2016. I headed over to chat with Artem, and we had a great and wide-ranging conversation covering topics like Bassiona Amorosa, the group that Artem has been a part of for the past two decades. We talk about the origins of this group. We talk about the Bradisage competition. You get to hear Artem sing, I don't love nobody, which is a real treat. How Artem always plays on a borrowed bass. How he does this, it plays at the level he does on a borrowed bass, and how it actually connects us together as bassists when we borrow basses. Wonderful, very poetic sentiment from Artem. And really, that's just scratching the surface. This is such a great chat with Artem. I love doing these in person like this. I know you're going to enjoy this. You'll also be hearing several selections from Artem, including selections from three solo albums. I have links to all of those in the show notes. Impromptu of the Soul with Artem Cherkov and the ensemble Quint Soul, Artem's solo album, Reminiscence of the 20th Century, and Inspiration with Bassiona Amorosa. If you're not familiar with that group, you're going to have a blast. Beautiful playing all around. Great conversation. And before we get going, I'd like to thank Diderio Strings, our longtime sponsor. Thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. We have a string giveaway going. If you haven't entered, go to controversyconversations.com slash strings. And I've got a clip here from Kate Jones, who works with Young Basis, about how she enjoys using Diderio helicor strings and the fractional sizes, the smaller sizes for her studio. Here's the clip. Recently, I've had the opportunity to try out Theodario's new 110-116 crossover size string for fractional basses. Um, the thing that I love about this string is that it's got a beautiful tone, and for tiny humans, the strings have to be easy to push down, which um, these strings are, and also they're easy to bow for them. Um, you don't have to use a lot of arm weight. Whether it's for your students or for yourself, Helicor strings are a great choice. They got the pizzicata, they got the hybrid, they got the orchestra strings. They're made in New York at the Diderio String Factory. Thanks, Diderio, for sponsoring the podcast. Really appreciate it. And this podcast is also brought to you by Rosin Saver, which is a revolutionary storage device that keeps bass rosin feeling as fresh as the day it was made. It prevents evaporation by completely saturating the air surrounding the rosin. I've been using it for the last few months. It works great. It's used by members of top orchestras, including the New York Philharmonic, the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, Los Angeles Philharmonic, Cleveland Orchestra, the Seattle Symphony, Toronto Symphony, Royal Concertgebouw, and many others. And... I have a special offer for you, the listeners. Use the promo code HEATH, that's my name, HEATH, at checkout for 10% off any and all orders from rosinsaver.com. Okay, here we go with our episode featuring Artem Cherkov.
I've checked out some YouTube videos before and that sort of thing. And like last night I was just watching through a few yeah, others. Yeah, and I yeah. love the arrangements. Who do do different people do different arrangements? Like how did how does that all work? Uh, actually, we have um, our teacher from Germany. He makes a lot of arrangements for us, even classical arrangements. And is that teacher? He's a Klaus Trump. Klaus Trump. Klaus Trump. Okay. Okay. Like okay. Everybody on the cool. group we 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 play together since. 2000, I guess, or a bit early. Actually, his group organized right like 1994 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. No, 96 because we celebrated in Berlin on last year our 20, 20 years together playing. Really, 20 years. 20 years. It's a long time together. That's a long time to get, and and it's like a di sometimes it's you're playing like a quartet, sometimes you're playing like a really big ensemble, right? Yes, yeah. we do so quartet, trio, sometimes duo as well. I mean, the different type of condition. And we use it all our recitals. We have um, not only like only quartet playing, just to mix everything like piano. Sometimes piano can play just alone, yeah. just to show how beautiful the sound. And then sure. we start grow up like then piano and some solos, piano and duos, piano and trios, yeah. and pi piano and ensemble. Like like many type of type, type, so like a lot of variation of, of our recital. Yeah. So we figure out like all recitals we have, we do a classical in the beginning. So in the first first part is very classical. We we play like season from Vivaldi on on four basses, like just very quartet. We play with piano like almost uh, accompaniment for a piano. She'll play like Mozart, some piano concerto. We do like string section like in oh, orchestra. Oh wow! Oh how cool this is, is that? Good. Oh yeah, that's it's, great. It's, yeah. It's bring crazy everyone like it's how it could be sounds like so beautiful like real orchestra just only four basses. What a great idea to fill out the the ensemble like that to, and and to feature the piano like that. That's a yeah. That's a great idea. So and we play that and some the, after we play no not really maybe not really famous music but which is beautiful. Yeah. So we try to bring near um, new composition into our, our program. Yeah. yeah sometimes. And of course, at the end, we usually, usually play, if it's like new location where we never played before, usually play with Passione Amorosa on mm -hmm. four double basses, like mm -hmm. we mix everything, like mm -hmm. everyone has some virtual stuff. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's very beautiful. Even not only performing on stage, but we even moving. I mean, yeah. we're moving on stage, we make jokes. So it's like not like real um, casual performance. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, like show. Actually. Yeah. I can say it's a good show. And after that piece, everybody just crazy. We make one more moment, uh, like third moments for for the Passione Marosa, which not really exist for a duo. Uh -huh. The trump take it's from, um, uh, I think it's from cello and bass, and transmitted for four double basses okay. from, from duo, because we we need to have like three moments piece. Yeah, right. Because sure. original is two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we we just we did it three moments, almost like a concerto. Yeah. Even inside of this concerto, we we moving, so we make a show, and yeah, it's it sounds perfect. Wow. Did okay. So th this is all like from that uh, Klaus Trump studio. I mean, these are like yes. the, and, yeah. and so how did that this whole idea come about? Like, was it his idea to do this, or did you no, all? Was it? No. So when when he moved to to Munich after, from the Berlin, he was like he escaped it from uh, East East Berlin part. Yeah. yeah. He became a like, position as a professor in Munich, and he need to bring more students to okay. have like nice salary and whatever they, yeah. need, they need class. They start to figure out what he can do interesting for people mm -hmm. to coming. Mm -hmm. Say, guys, you will play ensembles, which like bass ensembles is ne it's never happened before at yeah. all. I mean, he started that idea at all, and. He start to f research a lot of music, which is original, like from all time, like from Sperger, from Dietersdorf, who really organized to play already, like a couple hundred years ago, to play ensemble for double bass. Oh, okay. And nobody knows the music yeah. at all. He started to bring that. So it, it was works like slow, slow, but in 1996, uh, the major of um, high school, they hear his works like on some concerts or somewhere on some recital or student exam or something like that mm -hmm. and say, guys, I want to take a part in our show. We, It's a show that, um, how they call, like in Venice, they dress show, um, 
carnival or sure yeah like in in costume kind of yes okay it's okay. Like, like in europe it's every every march or, or february oh, this happened yeah carnival i think in in south america they call it carnival or like mardi gras is yeah but it, the is same kind of, in venice maybe yeah. you know like in venice a carnival yeah is that every year the in in rio i mean in brazil this is the same actually in germany they have as, as well like like dress carnival mm -hmm. It's not only about dress, but it's about like just one day, which is very fun, and everybody it can, can do any music or they're cooking some special. Like one day, like they have happiness, like it was yesterday, actually. They, yeah. They've happened international day of happiness. I don't know if you know okay. that. Okay, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, the friend of mine, they sent me, uh, sent me a letter that, oh, congratulations today is day, day of happiness, international day of happiness. So I never saw that too. Nice, nice yeah. holiday to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> So the same same was in in Germany. This keep like every year, like uh, if you go in the city and all most people on this day, they dress very beautiful, nice clothes, like which is uh, not usual for for at all right. during the casual days. So and and director he should organize uh, some concerts inside of this day in the conservatory or in the high school. I mean for the public, they yeah. can come. It's almost like a commercial for the, his school. Like everybody can come to listen, to see, and bring them kids to be, be in school. Okay. Um, so and he so he listened before uh, ensemble what uh, Trump organized, and he say, "Guys, do you want to play something? Just only maybe one piece." And Trump say, "Of course, we will figure out how it's work and what kind of piece we can play." And uh, that time in his class was four. Young lady, they was playing on double bass. Yeah, and he figured out, oh, it's good, very cool. If you will, will be like very nice, beautiful dress, play like very very funny music. Yeah, and just only one piece. I guess that time it was um, um, Hachituran, the, the sable dance. Mm. That time just only sure. one funny funny piece. And you know they was prepared and they're playing. They were they have very nice, beautiful dress, and then. They perform on stage and it's everybody say wow it's so cool there's a four beautiful girls play on such a great instrument a big one mm -hmm. like perfect music is perfect and just like you have to go ahead yeah don't stop so it was a beginning actually the carnival was a beginning carnival of germany in 1996 was a beginning of uh, our ensemble life okay until. wow the after of course they will they need some repertoire for that because it's, it was no one piece he started hard work really hard work on on music he started to to transmit like very popular music uh, like gershwin mm -hmm. uh, porgen bass suit he yeah. made it for double bass um season from vivaldi like mozart i told you like piano concerto yeah so he he tried to make everything and he get a lot of music he like he hard work like every day he was trans transmitted the all all stuff what he found like he knows like i like that music i found he found the score he transmitted for double bass they bring it in the class and they work with girls that time oh well, it's day to day year yeah. to year so. yeah kind of like organically yeah. growing over yes, that yes growing growing <laughs> After this first performance, they still have some contact with the people who was visiting there, and they asking guys, "We need you again, mm -hmm. but it's not next year, but soon." They want to have like, to bring some some concert halls. They start to bring them to some theaters. So um, they start like real recitals, like real groups travel. Yeah, it was first in the city, then in Germany, and then like everywhere, like in Korea. And yeah, we've been almost everywhere. Yeah, it's really interesting story. Yeah, and and I like it. It's amazing. It's been like you're celebrating just twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty yeah, years. Twenty years. And to, I entered to that group in two thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like four years after. Uh, all girls she was who was a student, they should should have the final exam and just go away with and they have a family and so like they start to destroy it and mm -hmm. and Ralph he says. 
we need uh, to make that condition of our playing that uh, everyone can change another one mm -hmm. because like uh, sometimes it's happened like somebody cannot play like, like in in regular quartet the yeah. first violin cannot play cello part yeah yeah or viola cannot play the cello or first violin or second violin so it doesn't change i mean that's very stable he say it's not really works for us mm -hmm. instrument our instruments is huge and we should uh, make a prepare them to be very flexible mm -hmm. to do whatever you want and he he said like everybody who enter an ensemble they should know all all parts each voice first second third just no matter what you're playing but you have to know everyone even it's very helpful and sometimes on a concert if we not really well prepared for the some piece some one piece and uh, some of the group they know the music they will just help for the person who that like some missing or somewhere yeah. now because it's it we were, actually it was my entrance to the ensemble like just in one day they have a concert night in the early morning Trump call me say uh, can you help us because I, I just arrived to to Munich like maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of months be just practicing yeah. to after exam just to be very serious he say you were a good bass player and we need your help right now like the girls who she was playing in ensemble, she have a problem with her hand. She like practice a lot and she cannot play today. But it's really today. I mean, yeah. today it's seven. So <laughs> right now it's like you have 10 hours to, we give you a program, we give everything. Just please help us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so no problem. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah, I'm just, we'll take all music and I just practice hard like whole day. And I get it in evening I play concert. So next concert, I start to mix. She play a little bit, I play it. So later she will come back, yeah. of course. After, yeah. yeah. But she's saying, yeah, actually, very, very soon she will be married and uh, then after kids, so not, not any more chance to play with us. So, and so changed another girls as well yeah. to, to the, another boys who was already in, in, in his class for Klaus Trump. And since 2001, I think we have a stable ensemble which is uh, members which not change mm -hmm. okay like okay. first five years there was like mixing everything like first girls and then girls one boy then girls two boys so like like we start to mix everything but since 2001 we all who was in the class they keep playing so we it's almost like we have uh 16 years the repertoire already like here yeah. and new music which we do um we we know it's very well because it's e easy to organize if we become a new piece just only one piece practicing you know, mm -hmm. all, all the rest we have like already right. in the head like, right. like almost by memory yeah it's very it sounds cool like if you're moving on stage everything by memory it's very well, like what it, what a cool uh, that's like a, such an advantage you're talking about uh th being all the same instrument right on like a quartet like the viola can't can't play the cello part right so and so like that gives you such flexibility because it maybe somebody can't make something oh someone else can play the first part or the second part and we did I, I played for years in Chicago in a bass ensemble we had six players and so we all knew at least we didn't know all the parts like you know mm -hmm. but we knew at least a couple parts so mm -hmm. like someone couldn't make the concert and then and then what a great way to learn the pieces too like if you really know all the parts mm -hmm. you're good that's good uh, that, good that's a different level of understanding of those pieces actually it's very different level of uh, you playing at all because if you know like everything you know mm -hmm. almost like score yeah almost like a conductor yeah yeah even if you know everything how the voice is moving or what harmony stuff is inside you save a lot of time for practicing together mm -hmm. i mean it could be very fast because you know everything yeah so just okay i play here you play there so i will just figure out how it works that's okay yeah sometimes on stage we do really funny stuff like we're we standing on four four people or five on stage and uh, we know the program of course we practice in before but sometimes we practice in one set mm -hmm. of our how we're standing on the stage he's saying okay can you play for me and this part saying okay and we make some on stage <laughs> everybody looking in the hall like what are the guys doing they, they moving. And then after guys it's no matter for us we just play for you yeah just enjoy that <laughs> it's really kind of fun there's no one ensemble no one ensemble can do that 
Well, that's something I love about wa watching the group play and then like watching your recital yesterday. Like there's like like incredibly like, you know, just emotional playing but the, and, and just beautiful playing. Um, but you also like to have fun, obviously. And like it's I think everybody left with a smile on their face and, and watching. I haven't had the chance to see the group live, you know, yeah. yet. But but I, I love just the the playfulness that you have in your. I mean, like yesterday you you sang that. <laughs> Tech, that song, like a Texan song. What was that that you sang? From Texas. Yeah. Yeah, Texas yeah. song. I don't love nobody. <laughs> uh, you know, rich girl. Her parents they should bring some good husband to her. Yeah. But she don't like no one. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody wants to have her money because she's rich. And say, so, I don't love nobody. And nobody loves me. They just care about my money. They don't care about me. <laughs> I just wanna live single. I just wanna be free. <laughs> Cause I don't love nobody. And nobody loves me. It was it was great. It was fun to like. I was sitting at, and uh, and kind of on the far edge of the audience. And I just like watched the audience as soon yeah, as you started because yeah. nobody knew what was going to happen. And all of, and then, yeah. So it was such a fun way to end uh, performance. And with the group too, I love. I just love the like joy and fun and playfulness that yeah, you have. Sure. In addition to those tender moments, right? Yeah. Like playing, you played the Shostakovich, that that mm -hmm. beautiful yeah. ad adagio. Um, and we were talking before I hit record here about, so you were playing on a borrowed bass and that's what you do when you're outside of uh, St. Petersburg, right? Yes, outside of St. Petersburg, I have to use that instruments. I mean, borrowing instruments just to save, um, to save all instruments, if it's all my own instruments, just to survive. Yeah. Because it's, it's a huge problem to travel with instruments, even if you have a trunk. If they don't break and it could be losing. Yeah. 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 Like it's happened many times, even when, when travel is group or once I travel like early before, before I don't take my base, before I start don't take my base on tour. Um, we flew from, I flew from uh, Munich to, I guess to Oslo or from Oslo, they have one more change to Trondheim, which is little city. Mm -hmm. There is no big aircraft. I mean, they don't, and big, it's like real small aircraft, like seats there inside one and two on a row. So even there is not enough space for luggage. Mm -hmm. So even when I brought my base to the airlines and they're saying, we cannot take them at all. Say, but I need them. <laughs> but just on the ground transportation they can have. <laughs> they're saying, okay, how long does it take? Like two days to organize everything for insurance and whatever. But I need it tomorrow. No chance. No chance. So even even in Trondheim at this little festival, so the first couple of days I play without my instrument, they after they arrived. Yeah, I play already on, on them. But is it making make me no no sense to play on my own instrument if it's every time is that kind of problem. Yeah. Even when like I explained to you in the story in, in Los Angeles, again we float with a group from Munich to Los Angeles and our basis was arrived to Chicago and we till we played already retitled we cannot get them back mm -hmm. to us and they move so the, the airlines decided to bring them back to Germany mm -hmm. because it's easy way for them <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah so that's that's that, that, that what one reason why to play on boring bass even it's very good for me because I can be connected to bass players who give me bass. Yeah, it's one more connection which we really need all basses to be together, like like in a bass family, and we can share our instruments, we can share our music, what we do, or bring something new, which is good, I think.
it's good. And it, I mean, and like how how many of us? I remember like twenty years ago, like looking out of the plane, and I see the people with my bass trunk, and it falls to the side, and you know all that sort of craziness. And like being able to avoid that just is so liberating. And yeah, that's a great point. Like that connection of like meeting other bass players in the town, and I, and I think the big fear people have is just like adjusting to a new instrument. And and you, I love to hear just like you've got sort of a routine that you go through to to kind of acquaint yourself with the new bass could you could you maybe just like talk through that a little yeah, bit? yeah yeah sure so i talk to my students actually don't don't think about bass think about yourself i mean you're mm. your performance bass is your instrument just on which you can perform so if you feel that something wrong with instrument maybe it's something wrong with you and mm. just to try to figure out how it really works for you to perform it. So I make some special exercise for them that can really be prepared like in 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. It's in the band who the guys, how the guys playing. Yeah. They can really figure out how it works like with, with playing shift or to finding a D or D on grief bread on, on the fourth position or find the harmonics on the top, which independent of what you need to mm -hmm. for performance. Uh, even even when I, I play just a little bit, and I can really say it's yeah, it's maybe it's easy to fix fix your hand, how to be really correct in tune, well in tune, and how you can play, play a pizzicato on bass. Mm -hmm. It's much easier that really hard work how to bring the bass with you. So I think it's everything is going from the your your preparation for that playing at all. Maybe it's better for you to take like a couple hours time before or one day before you arrived. If you really feel not very well with the new instruments, take one more day. Mm -hmm. Take another instruments, new one instruments, or if you have a couple couple bases to make a choice and just take bass, practice on them, and you can play. You're ready to play. Mm -hmm. Actually, I so many people who are saying, actually not it was a student actually there was really, they they waiting for me to some new exercise how to be prepared for the playing and they come to me with his own instrument saying okay you're playing very well so let's take another one almost yeah. like a part of practicing sure take another one any anyone so any like take this mad one the very bad one just <laughs> you can be playing almost like test yeah you test an instrument and I will show how your hand is working. And usually it's 90% is okay. Okay. 90%. 10% they're saying, oh, we cannot do that because of some some reason. But I say, look, I look at you and your hand work is very good. I mean, your intonation is very well. Even your ear helping you mm -hmm. to, to be fixed. Just start slow, listen how the sounds, what kind of sound you need, how you... If you play pizzicata, how you do that pizzicata, what you're touching your strings. Yeah. If you play bow, just take bow mm -hmm. and try to feel or this, this moment when you start. I mean, what quality you need. And start to work. Almost like tune up your your, your ear and your mind about the instruments. Almost like similar if you buy some like new phone. I don't know what's about iPhone, but, but like Android phone. Yeah you start to tune up it for you i mean yeah. to put their colors you like the, the symbols you like or everything you like so you everything you make tuning for you even don't be waiting for double bass that's already like exist for you no you will but do the same almost the same things like we're doing in the regular world i know for some guys it's lazy to do that mm -hmm. it could be <laughs> it could be <laughs> but you know believe me if you be travel with a bass if you be um uh, losing your base yeah you will be change your mind uh -huh. how it really works and you think okay i will spend more day even thanks to to that you need another instruments you will be have more relation for another bass players mm -hmm. if you be ask them to give you bass and i think it's just good for us i mean to be very connected with, yeah. with the whole world i mean like bass world it's very interesting I, I agree. You you made a comment in the recital yesterday about it was a, 
Italian base and an English base, and you're here I'm from Russia, Russia yeah. in America, in San Francisco, playing Italian music. You know, just like this kind of interesting meld of, uh, yeah. uh, here we are experiencing just this, this diversity of uh, cultures and music, yeah. and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Actually, it's idea of music at all. Uh, music never happened just by themselves. Music was connected everything. You yeah. know, some wars was stopped because of music or mm -hmm. art. So it's main idea. It's full of energy stuff, which is interesting for everybody. Yeah. Even even not for human, even from from some animals. They was looking for music as well. If you done a play, uh, it's a very funny story. I was just practicing. I was in South Africa and I was practicing. There is no window on on, on houses. And a couple of dogs was looking on me. Wow, so low sound. I just know, like that's relaxing, <laughs> because bass is like real low bottom sound, and they make yeah. relaxing everyone, mm -hmm. even dogs. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is I like. Oh, come on, guys, come on, listen here. <laughs> so. Yeah, picturing my cats like sitting at my feet, like listening to me, coming up as I'm practicing. It's, it's yeah. same. Is that connection? Because of vibration of floor, they yeah. like it. Yeah. And they, they start to <laughs> like that, you know, like, with your bass, actually. The bass gets the low sound, like, yeah. and the cat come to you, and get the yeah. very nice. So you do it together. So ensemble, yeah. <laughs> Which is very cool. I like it. So it means, uh, and seriously, I mean, the instrument, uh, it's a very interesting instrument because it, I think it's very new. It's a very unusual instrument on stage at all. We know the history. Bass life starts like for 300 years ago. Yeah. But only few person each 100 years have opportunity to bring that bass in life, mm -hmm. which is very few. But we can, we can see the composers, mm -hmm. not that much composers at all. It was the last 100 years because instrument was not really popular. Yeah. Now is better, and now is better player uh, thanks to makers who make the bass um, and who make the strings, and we have more opportunity to play on them bass, faster, interesting music, famous music, mm -hmm. which is very important for us. And right now I can say, if like for a hundred years we have just only a few bass players who can play really well, but now it's like a lot, really a lot, finally. Yeah. But they, they a lot of bass players really still scary to be on stage. Yeah. Scary. And usually agencies doesn't take bass in a in a concert role, unfortunately. Like play last night in this uh, Davis Hall. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of pictures on all corridors. Maybe you saw that or yeah. 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 It's not only there but uh, in uh, in many halls. Yeah. Many halls in the United States. The picture with sign is there. No one bass player picture, just maybe halls where it's uh, jazz played sometimes. Yeah, and they they have just jazz band and bass like hey uh -huh. I'm here. Or one hall I saw the Gary Carr picture and Edgar Mayer picture mm -hmm. because he's from there. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else. No one counter hall that then. I start to bring that in my orchestra, and right now we have um, already like third season. We have every year concert uh, with double bass as a solo and orchestra like okay. once a year like every year i started in st petersburg um i do right after this tour i go to moscow and i play i will play in moscow in Bolshoi theater and there's a concert hall mm -hmm. i will do that recital again okay. every year they give me a chance to play with orchestra some little cities are out of on on volga river they give me a chance again every second year mm -hmm. play with orchestra so it's like already in a row i can it's, say like slow it's doing very slow because everybody's scary for the instruments mm -hmm. really scary that what double leaves i should bring them all cds i have like like the huge paperwork just to show guys looking dirt like magazine i make tr translation for from us magazines where they have like article about playing of double bass or from germany or critics from Russian concerts, and yeah. they, they look at them, oh, okay, we should try. Mm -hmm. Should just only like, should try. But you gotta kind of justify it. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like there's still that fear or that uh, of the unknown, or it's just an unfamiliar, like you're saying, it, back at the concert hall, you see all these photos, but not, uh, not, not bass.
so the Bradditch competition was 2010. 2010. Right? Yeah. Okay. And I was talking to Jeff about that. And he was saying, uh, uh, we were talking about, because he's doing it again, right? Yes, the, uh, sure. this, Very soon. In yeah, September. yeah. And he was talking about just how uh, open the, the requirements are very open. I think in terms of like repertoire that you pick, like like he was saying that the the who are, the people that are selected have a, I mean it's almost free reign to play what you want. Is that how it was when you did yeah, it? The same same thing. Okay, uh, I asked him what's the reason. Actually, I really agree with that reason. Yeah. So they give you time on mm -hmm. stage. It's a competition. Um, really, com you compete with another guys. Not only how fast you play similar things, but how good you can be on stage in the future if you be a winner how you can um, bring the instrument in the world in the future yeah. how you make your program mm -hmm. like last last night uh, last day uh, i played the recital you was looking how i organized the program mix it from old classical music romantic russian romantic mm -hmm. contemporary stuff duo some a lot of mix yeah so in this case uh, usually, if you go for, for for the double bass recital, like student recital, they play like two two parts recital, like each part like 35, 40 minutes. Actually, you're gonna be tired after thirty minutes listening to the double bass because almost similar. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, so idea of a competition to be very smart, yeah, to know how you can figure out the program, mm -hmm. which show you artists the show you acknowledge about the instruments music at all i mean the libraries yeah. you, do. you can you can research on anything and you have time on stage inside of this time you have to show best you can mm. if you can show that if you will figure out the program which is interesting to hear and audience will be saying you thank you and just in the future if they will be a winner they will really bring instrument in the world because usually if you if some hall, which has happened very few times, some concert halls invite you to play a recital. Usually for double basses, never order some music. Like for, if they have violin, they, okay, we want to have in this week, we want to have Prokofiev, or we want to have Brahms, right. or piano, we want to have Shostakovich, or we want to play uh, Mozart, or something like that, they're ordering. Mm -hmm. which never happened with double bass. They cannot order because nobody knows what they can play. <laughs> right, <all>. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the main manager is saying, is that bass can play it at all solo, just by, alone, just by themselves? And I think, yes, of course. Yeah. They're similar to any instruments, nothing mm -hmm. nothing different. That's similar to everything. But what, we, what you can play? I say, give me a chance, I will show you what I can do. Okay. So, and you figure out the program. And after, after you figure out the program, and you will show best you can, and you became avoiding from from judge. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. Edgar Meyer said something very similar in terms of like length of time, and, and he wasn't like disparaging the bass all, but like the, after about a half hour or so, like just the, the, he, some varieties necessary. Like yeah. he's like solo bass or bass and piano. Like there's just like a, a certain a certain point where you just want to change up. So I totally saw that yesterday. Yeah. That that's that's great. and the, the cool thing. Or an interesting thing about the Bradditch competition is like they're it's, they're looking for an advocate for the instrument, right? Someone to sort of move it into that yes. next phase. Because we're at I, I call it the bass revolution, kind of like what's been going on the last 20, 25 years. Yes, exactly. I mean, and you've been sort of through that, but it, like kind of from the cusp of that. But even like looking at like 1995 to 2015 or 2017 right now i mean it's just remarkable what's been happening those to but what what's still kind of lacking is the bass in a concert hall but but what what seems great to me is that part of that whole competition is getting management doing the carnegie hall recital yeah, that's huge recordings yeah, yeah. yeah so like what Maybe just talk through like what did after winning that competition like what did the next maybe like year look like for you? Yeah, actually, I could say that that competition really helped me a lot mm -hmm. uh, because of all reasons you told already, like concert in a Carnegie Hall and make a CD recording. Mm -hmm. Because if they're not competition, I don't really have enough money to 
to rent a hall to make a recording, yeah. which is quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And even they made for me an uh, edition of that CD. And they present that CD on, they have some internet radio, double bass radio. Yeah. They're sending the everywhere um, and broadcast the, the pieces from my CD. Um, so they they did a lot of things, even the recitals from me and master classes, almost like right now on tour. Um, and I, I just give them my schedule and I, I feel like a few days free. And the Bradetich Foundation gave me a chance to be in Utah and BYU University. Mm -hmm. um, then in Dallas and TCU University to play and to to work with a student in UNT. I, I did as well classes, mm -hmm. which is I think is just great. You know what we really need? We need right now to keep going this revolution like it all. You know, in and forward. You just have to move forward. Yeah. You have to push that uh, things um, because we need to. Um, being some person who will who will be responsible for the nice quality mm -hmm. of playing. Right now, for the foundation, I just had that person. Even yeah. Jeff Bradish himself, he played perfect on bass. Mm -hmm. Even his friend, like Catalin Rataro, he's played perfect on bass. Mm -hmm. This is a person who really responsible for a nice quality. Mm -hmm. Me and everybody, and everybody of this group, they work in the push instrument in the front. I'm very connected to these guys, even because of recital, thanks to this competition, actually. Yeah. Because they, after the, my performance, they know my name. Yeah. If not, if not that happened, if nor in in my biography, no Carnegie Hall or CD recordings, they will okay, yeah, bass player, yeah, you know, but Carnegie Hall, they yeah. give you already level. Yes. Carnegie Hall is not not easy. It's not just of something, you know. It's a level. It's a level of great performance. That's a level that everybody on the street knows what Carnegie Hall yes. is, right? Yeah. And that's such a you, you don't have to explain yourself with that. Yeah. Even you sometimes you have to explain like, oh, I play in some university, BYU, something like that. Say, okay, it's Provo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, it's good. But yeah. Carnegie Hall is oh wow, Carnegie right. Hall. If I say like, sing with the harmonic hall. So, with a with a roof harmonic orchestra behind cool it's very cool yeah like it people, should be people should know be. Yeah. people know so this is idea of the for foundation of brother jeff bradditch and his competition to bring the base to that uh, highest level of performance mm -hmm. even a similar to piano and mm -hmm. all, any solo instrument what we usually would casual to have even even for the future like almost audience already be tired for listening like five time a week piano concertos, yeah. one time a month cello concertos. But there's not really not really like feeling that well uh, in this way. I mean, but it's really a lot happened. Like piano is like main main instrument. Right, right. We are doing a bit less, but cello is very few. Mm -hmm. Even even clarinetists, not everyone clarinet is playing on or another instrument. Very popular is piano. Yeah, of course, it's very famous because it was created a long, long time. Yeah, like two hundred years on the piano, piano, piano. Like press press that information in, in people's mind. They have mm -hmm. to go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but believe me, the whole old audience who was listening to bass, I mean, the good condition bass players. They were saying, wow, it's really cool because yeah. it's different sound. It makes a really low sound, which make your just nice feeling till very high is almost similar to cello. Mm -hmm. Even the beautiful music, which you play, which we usually have to play beautiful music like Rachmaninoff or Sotakoy, just incredible. They bring people crying at all. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's new, we can say like new wave of performance, yeah. So bass have a huge future. Yeah. I mean, it's real logic for, for now. Even bass maker can make a little bass, a small size for kids. They can really start early. Yeah. In my time, it was just impossible to do that. Uh, I started when I was 16. Uh, I played like 11 years cello before. Mm -hmm. But after, just take another instrument because I hear... I think there's more opportunity to do, to do my performance career on, on that instrument. It's huge. 
it looks terrible in the beginning but you know when when i start playing i said it's actually the same like a cello but more range for really yeah. low to really high right right just how we can use that like all my teachers saying don't look on instrument we, we never we never had in, in russia we never had the perfect instruments yeah even the a lot of instruments was destroyed on in the second war even before or losing or the sell to the sold to to here or in europe to somewhere so worst instrument we have mostly 90 mm -hmm. percent the only few instruments which is perfect so it means we should figure out how it really works and again back how to prepare yourself for the playing on the yeah. instrument yeah and my teacher saying your your hand is instrument and what instrument you use it it's just like options options that's of it. quality of sound yeah that's yeah. a great way to look at it your hands the instrument and mm -hmm. just quality of sound is the variable and that yeah that's a really healthy way to look at it because i think people their identity gets tied into their instrument so often and they just can't can't function without it or they don't they haven't learned how to function without it i should thank you my teacher actually who, who bring me to that conditional level my of my the greatest teacher i had it's my father-in-law he heard my when i was like in the first year student and uh, he he heard my playing he said wow you play very good but you need to know that you play right now like a bassist it's okay it's correct yeah. like everybody playing like bassist but I, he said like i think you can do more yeah and he started to work with me with a lot of things which is not only about the music about like physics physics engineering because we are, our body is almost similar. We have a hand, we have a, a corners, we have mm -hmm. the muscles, which is physical things, psychology things. And he explained to me, you guys have to be very smart. Your instrument is huge. Your body should be prepared almost like a training, mm -hmm. almost like a fitness to do. That your muscles should be enough prepared to play on a huge instrument. Your ear should be well prepared that understand the different level of harmonies which is low or which is a high yeah you have to know harmony stuff i mean you're a bottom instrument in the orchestra like your lowest and if you play music with a piano something you have to really know how it's mix, how you can mix it i mean mm -hmm. inside of harmony because at the same time be a solist same time be in the bass line so a lot of things it's happened like years to years so many many years i spent for, for that practicing and finally on 2010 i get it yeah. i mean get it i just make a result uh -huh. to to be on the stage yeah. in years I was I was watching a master class that you were doing and it was in Russian and my Russian is non-existent so I did, but I could see what you're talking with the student just about like kind of alignment the student was sitting on a stool and you were kind of like bringing the arm down into alignment bringing everything just kind of like more the, into more of like an ergonomic like it looked like maybe you're, you're re-angling his torso and and that kind of thing yeah sure I, I, my idea is to do like when you be performing on stage you should mix everything think even you how you move how you're flexible like again mm -hmm. uh, yesterday after my title the one student from from the university he asked me to uh, to work with him on his right hand he had like I have some problem mm -hmm. with his right hand he's, he was playing as well German position and I saw him and just I saw that problem with the, his uh, muscle work and I say guys you, you're okay it's not not a problem he said like a problem with left hand and how holding bow I say you, you're holding a bow it's very well your left hand is okay the problem um how do you feel touching of the things you have to feel the freedom when you're playing mm -hmm. and he asked me how how i can edit it how i can get it at all i mean how i should practice it and i asked him can you swim at all 
He said, yes, I can swim. He is his surfer. So you go to the ocean in the next couple of days if you feel well. Even today is good weather. Maybe he's yeah. right now. Right. <laughs> ocean. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what are you going to do there? Take your board and put your board under the water and mm -hmm. move your hand. You will feel the freedom. You never think of that it's a bow. Mm -hmm. Almost some, some people, like, they take something in the hand and start to stuck. Like, oh, yeah. it's, it's hard to play. No. <laughs> and thinking like you're playing a piece, but inside the water, and you will feel how your hand is working. Mm -hmm. How you're moving, how you, what, what mus muscle you used for the playing, you know, it will be flexible. In the opposite, when you'll be practicing, thinking how you was in motion, how you swim. I hope, I, hope he, I hope he's out there doing that. That's yes, a <laughs> yes. I, I'm very sure because he was really surprised, wow, how I can pra practice in the ocean. Yeah, you can do it in water as well. Anytime you can use for your instrument, just use that, take yeah. it and just enjoy it. So it will be enjoyed for sure. I'm very sure that. Even as I'm practicing with the kids, I give a master class for kids in Hong Kong. And there's uh, sometimes they practice very hard, just they need to some result like very soon. Say, so guys, no, you don't need any result. Just enjoy almost like you play with your toy. Yeah. Just own the things, just enjoy them, make them. Um, like make them your hands very soft, almost like you make very kind to them and just, you know, like I don't know how to say it in English, like where you have like little dog, which is your, right? Sure, it's like yeah, petting, sure. caressing yeah, yeah, yeah. or kind of, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. And you know, they start to thinking, oh yeah, the feeling, because the kids, it's very open and they start to do that and everything has happened faster. <laughs> it's without them. Say, so, wow, the parents saying, wow, it's incredible how you can do that. Because like we, we spent like one month to bring them freedom for that hand. Say, so, because you're saying you have to, because of base or because like you know like like special war but mm -hmm. don't, don't think of them yeah. think about you not about them not about base but think about you how you will how you will drive them or how you can use them or yeah. how you play on it yeah you is the instrument um, kind of similar, yeah. yeah but it's not really good uh, word using instrument i mean uh, it's almost relation to the instrument relation I mean, how to you, instrument. yeah almost yeah. like with um, your neighbor or with your partner mm -hmm. And actually, bass sometimes is, it's really feeling. If you touch your strings strong, I mean, with a strong hand, and the sounds are different. It's very strong. It's not not beautiful anymore. Even I like to take bass, and I like first what I do before performance. I clean my instrument. I take some special cleaner. I just clean the instrument. Just so it will be just very easy for me to relate it to them if it's like very clear. Mm -hmm. And then after I start to work and can really touch my, my skin fingers, I can touch the, the grief bread or strings and how it really works. Mm -hmm. Not only here, but mm -hmm. I mean the touching on the little things which is here. It's just important. Actually, it's everything, you know, it's so just on a few stuff which is give for the music very important things. I mean, what's music at all is a little bit, yeah, a little bit higher, a bit lower, just a little bit. It mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like like in painter, you know, like like uh, black square, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, why <laughs> the couple million of dollars? Because of the special touch. If you will look in there, on the little things is there inside, and you will just wow, it's really interesting. I mean, how he moved, what he did, maybe some picture inside a picture, something like that, just yeah. a little bit. This arts. It's, it, it means art. The, the little details. Yeah, yeah little totally. details. Yeah. It's not like phone. Like we, we pay like thousand dollars for iPhone. Like a, oh, but almost similar. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I've got um, and I want. I'll make sure we have plenty of time to get to the airport here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so, but um, I've got I got one more question, and I'm, I'm sure lots of people listening to this, they see the success you've had. You know, like. Solo career, uh, principal base in, in St. Petersburg. I mean, it's just like multifaceted. Uh, you're going around the world, playing recitals and teaching, and and I'm, and I think it'd be interesting to hear, like, if you could now you've done all these things. If you could go back and maybe give the like 18 year old self, like, what advice would you give your 18 year old self, like, knowing what you know now, what you what you've done? It's a hard question, actually. Yeah. You know, it's uh, almost like people who is like over 70 and they ask them, what's, 
what you want to change your life, or they ask it to her, they want to change, yeah. you have a chance to change your life at mm -hmm. all, and you will be completely different. They say, of course, I want to do that. And they start to thinking, actually, I have already what I have. Yeah. I think it's, it will be almost the same, same, same stairs what I did since I'm 18, actually 16, when I started to play bass. I figure out my career or my life very, very carefully, just to don't make any wrong step, mm -hmm. because I look around. I look what's happened with with another musician, with another people. Someone is is getting very top level, and they start to thinking this is a great. Actually, it's a huge problem for for musician if they took his nose and oh yeah. top, yeah. and some days it's will be not real right exactly yeah. <laughs> should be very careful about and like my parents are always saying uh, you should be very uh, never took your nose on top just always be in reality okay just yeah. look around converse with the people uh, have a good relation it's much more important even, even it's help for a performance like uh, with audience be in touch with audience mm -hmm. don't show everybody that you are so cool no it's no 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 way because if you be showing some cool, everybody will think, yeah, but I know a better one. Yeah. So and they will make like critics for you and whatever. But in this case, you be just open for everyone and just share, mm -hmm. just share what you have. This is my my yeah. my goal, my my idea. On stage, I not just uh, just performance. I part of you time because you. And I'm really thankful for everyone who spent the time for me. Yeah. And they're my thankful. It's just playing for them, for, for the guys. I mean, like I, I enjoy with you. Like on the stage, it's not a work for me. It's not a work at all. It's real performance, which happened in the moment. Like I feel energy from the hall. If they give me energy, you will, they will become more. Yeah. After I will be like reflect everything, reflect them energy, and will bring. I will try my best my whole professionality to in that everybody can enjoy my playing that's my that's my yeah. idea yeah i know you can feel that there's like an energy to the performance and the energy coming from the audience yeah. to you and through and share and not like trying to like show how cool you are yeah. with all your amazing yeah. technical abilities yeah. but like share in that moment yeah, yeah. it's beautiful that, that's why what, what i mean the old musician actually on stage should should thinking about that i mean right now like a lot of piano players a lot of cellists and whatever but someone who is too cool, mm -hmm. or they're thinking that it's too cool, you know, like, okay, come on, like, take yeah. take a look around. Yeah, right. Maybe it's not real. <laughs> yeah, just believe me. <laughs> and the people will be very more open for you if you be just just be simple. Yeah, just make a simple stuff and almost like uh, like all religion ideas. Just open mm -hmm. open your mind and just open for everyone. Yeah. But I cannot say that base it's religion. It's not religion at all. I mean, it's just relation. Rela base is relation. That's why if you look around, almost base bases in the world very connected. Yeah. Better than cellist or another instrumentalist. Much even, more so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even not like all designers or all like arts people. Is base is really connected to the world. Mm -hmm. It's really connected. It is. Which is, I love that. All, yeah. Almost like I, I told last night on stage, we are not instrument, we are family. Yeah. But it's really family. And the family who is almost like grandfather of other instruments. Mm -hmm. Because without bass, no one orchestra can survive. Is no good bass players, sound of orchestra is, will be worst. Yeah. 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 But it's true. Like we, we, we talked last night with my very good friend, Shinji. Um, and he told me, you know, the lowest, lo lowest note, the bottom note in of bass section of give sound of the violin is brilliant because of the di distance for the acoustical distance. But it's true. If you take a, p a piano and you will put some note which is very low and which, which is very high, and it will be a completely different story if you play in one octave two mm -hmm. notes mm -hmm. which is like simple and, and if you take very bright white 
It's really mm -hmm. a very nice sound and beautiful sound. The same with orchestra, but in a huge condition. Yeah, there's like there's no music it, from any culture that doesn't have that like 16 foot or organ sound, like mm -hmm. like instrument, the bass yeah. instrument. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. like a, a true across you name it from yeah. rock to like any yeah. music from any culture in the world, and like mm -hmm. and it gives like you said gives brilliance to those exactly. to those yeah. upper upper uh, instruments. Yeah. Man, Artem, thank you so much for, for oh, chatting. And just congratulations on what you're doing. And uh, uh, thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I really enjoy the people who really wants to know something new and who wants to enjoy as well with me. So it's like like together work on the stage. I'm working for guys. I'm playing for guys. I enjoy the guys. Yeah, the audience is my friend. Yeah, yeah. this is important. Artem, what a pleasure to have you on the show. So great to catch up with you in person. It was so much fun to chat with you. I can't wait to see you again when you come through the Bay Area or wherever we may meet next. Thanks for everything you're doing for the base. Super exciting and what a great conversation. Wow. If you aren't getting my weekly base news email. You can get that very easily. Go to ContraBaseConversations.com. There's a form right there to sign up. I've been putting out these weekly update videos, which have been a lot of fun. I love doing them. Part of why I was doing them, well, for many reasons, but one was trying to get better at video, frankly, and then also try to find a way to share this timely content, like news of events, that's not on these evergreen podcasts like this. If I tell you about some event in early 2017, many of you listening, it's 2019, 2020, whenever, and who cares, right? So trying to find a way to do that. My new approach now going forward the rest of the spring is to actually share that in a nice, detailed email weekly with links to everything. What I've been sharing on video can also easily be shared in email. And I think that might work a bit better, or I don't know better, but it's what I'm trying now. So if you don't get my email newsletter, just go to ContraBaseConversations.com and you can sign up there. I also offer a Spotify playlist, and I try to tie it together with what's going on in the podcast, got a great following on that too. I'm trying not to email people to death. So if you want that, if you sign up for my list, you'll see an option to also get the Spotify newsletter. I usually put that at the beginning of the week. These days I've been putting out the weekly newsletter, eh, kind of more toward the end of the week. And it's stuff that's not available on the blog. It's not available anywhere on Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or Instagram or whatever. It's just going out via email. So I'd love it if you connect with me there. We've got several thousand people following along, and it's a great way to communicate. And I'd love to have you be part of that conversation. Thank you so much, Artem, for chatting. Thank you to you, the listener, for listening. I love putting these together. It's so much fun doing this, and I really hope you're enjoying it. Share it with a friend. I'm sure you know somebody in your life that's a bass player that has never listened to one of these podcasts. Let them check out Artem and the beautiful things he has to say about the bass and his wonderful playing and pass this along, share it on social, forward the email to a friend, anything like that would be great. And that is going to do it for another episode of Contra Bass Conversations. I have so many cool things in store for you. I don't even know where to begin, but I will cease talking so you can go on with the rest of your day. Thanks again for listening. We will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum. Uh -huh.